Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> okay, this feels awkward. I'm sorry. No, that's 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 uh. Natural. Oh, no. Hi. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, I guess maybe the title says what we're going, maybe not. I don't know, I don't we, know what the title's gonna be. No, <laughs> we, we, we don't know, but maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. That's for uh, future us, Let's I guess. Future Nikki to future, uh, Nikki. Nikki, future Nikki's problem. Yeah, video editing Nikki. Yeah. You're very kind, very generous, I must say. Um. It's been a while since we've done a sewing video, and it's not going to be a uh, normal sewing video. No, because Nikki is not going to do the sewing, at least not the... not most of it. I'm just gonna command him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be your tutor. I'll be doing the sewing. He's gonna do the sewing. sewing. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be something. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be. Uh, it's not that complicated. Everything complicated. It's well, a pretty simple. Garment. Yeah, yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> it comes easy to me. For me, on the other hand, um, apart from sewing a pillowcase once. Oh ah, yeah, you've done that. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's uh, that's my sewing experience and uh, putting on a button. I'm gonna be making, or at least partly making. <laughs> I plan to cheat, of course. Merlin's robe from um, Disney's uh, Sword and Stone. The name is Merlin, <coughs> and I happen to be the world's most powerful wizard. And uh, what? What kind of occasion are you making this uh, Merlin robe for? Well, um, some of you might know, some of you don't. Who knows? Who knows anything? But uh, we'll be going to World Disney World for our holiday. And there is uh, the not so scary... Mickey's not so Mickey... scary Halloween party. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that a one. <laughs> yeah, and of course, a Halloween costume is in order and you can you guys can guess what i'm gonna wear who who i'd like to know who oh, that's going to be pretty obvious but uh, mm -hmm. i'll be wearing mulan yeah so and i'll be uh i'll be as uh, merlin now how, how did you come to merlin is it because of the beard <laughs> i had this idea that I wanted a, uh, a wizard costume anyway, so I was like, um, "Yeah, this is a fun idea to do." You're you're a avid Terry Pratchett reader too. Yeah. So I so, guess maybe that makes sense. I guess maybe. Um, but it was one of the things uh, I wanted to have, like a wizard outfit. So this was kind of like a uh, uh, an opportunity to do that. So. So uh, we already we bought fabric. We bought some beautiful blue linen. Yeah. Um, we also bought some like natural linen that I'm going to uh, stiffen to use as buckram. Yeah, for the pointy, for pointy hat. Pointy hat. There's something I'm going to do. I think that's a little bit maybe too advanced for you. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, shoes. Yeah. Well, sort of a shoe covers. Yeah. Well, like. Yeah. Enough talking. I want to see you do, do some, some shit. So, first thing tomorrow morning, we'll start a full schedule. Eight hours a day. First things first, the I already pre-washed the linen. So first thing what we're going to do is to iron it. Okay. Before we can do anything. Well, let's uh, iron this uh, bad boy. You, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> So while Melchior is doing the ironing, <laughs> I have done some measurements to see um, how sort of we're going to figure out the pattern. It's pretty simple. Um, and then 
this is basically what we're going to work with. Uh, basically triangle and sleeves. It's all pretty straightforward. So, <laughs> Are you ready to cut some fabric? Are you willing to try? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Okay, so we already drew out the pattern, pattern on the yeah. fabric, and he's going to cut. Yeah. Are you ready? So. Okay, so uh, here we go. Well, you've done it now. Yeah, it, no turning back. Nope. There goes the expensive fabric. <laughs> Wasn't that expensive, but. Well, voila! Congratulations on your first cut. Yes. <laughs> okay, now the now the rest. Yep. All right. So we've cut out all the pieces, and uh, we're going to do the uh, neckline first. So we got a little. Uh, I'm forgetting what the English word is. What's the English word? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're the, the, the uh, expert here. Uh, the, the piece of fabric. I'm gonna put a put a piece of fabric or the piece of the piece of fabric. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, what we're gonna do first because we don't want to uh, um, over uh, like lock this, and uh, we don't want to put too much effort. I'm going to. So let you sew one centimeter from the edge so that we can fold it in and iron it and then stitch it down so that this edge is nicely finished. Um, also, I'd just like to say, hi, this is not going to be historically accurate. We're just... It's a fantasy outfit. Yeah. Um, it's a wizard outfit, so... Yeah, we're doing it <laughs> our way. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah. Time to get behind the machine. You ready? Okay. All right. We're gonna yeah. start easy. Look, Ma, I'm on the sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Very slowly. Pick up the pace. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. You made a thing. I made a thing. It's a thing. Now we're gonna put that thing, thing on, on this thing. Okay, so good sides together. Like this. Yep. And then we get some line, pins. Line it up. Yeah. You can also check if you put a pin here and then you check below. Yep, yep. that matches. Then you're just gonna pin it in place. And I'm gonna sew. Make sure that when you're sewing, well, this is my pre personal preference. He's doing it by chance, right? But that your pins, if I'm sewing like this, that your pins are going that way. Otherwise, when you reach mm. your pin, you you're not able to pull the pin out because your your sewer foot's in the way. So, uh, I personally would like more pins. That it's more secure because once you once you get this on the machine, mm. things can get go and shift. So I would put uh, some more pins on the like sewing uh, line. No, in the direction of the sewing. So yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, does it have to go on this line? Mm -hmm. Okay, then so. There. Mm. There's a chance when you are pinning it like that that you are that the fabric is gonna get twisted. So you better no. can always let it lay flat, and you have to feel the point. Okay, so here it has to go that way. Yeah. So feel the needle touching the the table, 
and then you can lift it up. Yeah. You'll get, you'll get the hang of it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Bernadette Banner <laughs> vi vi video bombing us. <laughs> She's watching as you so. Oh. This is his first time like managing a large quantity of fabric on the knitting machine. So it's a little bit maneuvering it. And it's not helping that I'm breathing down your neck with a camera. Is it? No, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. No pressure. Alright, we got it. We're getting to a corner. Is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? <laughs> I'm more like now the <laughs> Yeah, the whole fabric maneuvering thing, it's, yeah, if, yeah it's, it's the same. Slow down a bit. Yeah. Until you reach the point. Okay, now and then the as point. Ross will say... Ross? Ross? Pivot! <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna... Yep. Pivot! This... Thing... Around? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure it's all smooth. Yeah, smooth. And go. Okay. So now, what do you think is happening next? I have no idea. I've, uh, I don't even know why we put this on. <laughs> like, we're going to make a hole and now we have, but because we're going to make a hole, we have to put this on. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, you're only confusing the boy. <laughs> all right. So. What we're gonna do, we can take these pins off. Mm. We're gonna take the scissors. The scissors. The scissors, the scissors are over there. Okay. And then you can, we're gonna cut about a centimeter along the line. Um, mm -hmm. Just the, the top nope. thing or Both through? Both layers. Okay, so okay, I guess I'm just gonna put, do this. Uh, no, you did it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was the what? <laughs> Woman? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, they're both true, right? You're yeah. like, that's supposed to happen, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That works every time. Oh, didn't you have the... I did, yeah. You can take the... No, this one? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Dang. Now he's going in with thinning out the seam with half a centimeter on the top layer. And we're thinning out. Checking. Oops. Okay, that's fine. Just keep make sure okay. that you're doing it. Yeah, I was like, why is it? Yeah. Well, I guess that's the trials and tribulations of mm -hmm. also you're allowed to make mistakes and this is not something that's <laughs> gonna be a problem i'm gonna make it a problem well in that case <laughs> <laughs> Man in the dress. Yes, indeed. A fine monkey suit. So this is, we're just, we're just trying out the uh, neckline, how that was going. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the shoulders being very straight, but I think once the sleeves are in that, that will pull stuff down. Um, it's a little bit too long, but we left extra hem in there. So far, so good. Yes. Okay. We're gonna have our sleeve. We're gonna put in gusset. So I already marked out where the gusset's gonna go. So we have our head sleeve. We're gonna stitch that. And then it's very important that you stitch till there. And till there, and just stop there. Otherwise, 
uh, you're gonna get in trouble with your gusset. Okay? Okay. Let's uh, do this. So while Melchior is uh, working actually today, I'm going to be working on his trick or treat bag. So I've got this purple canvas, it's looking very bluish, but it is purple. Um, and the sides I have enforced with iron on interfacing. The, the big side I have doubled with uh, tarlatan to give a little bit more extra body. And then I have this cute purple lining that I had in my stash. Um, and I basically just cut out the same pieces. And then this is going to be the uh, closure. So um, I'm going to sew this up and uh, see how the shape gets. <laughs> if we get the desired shape with this. Alright, so I've sewed the sides to the bag. And it's looking pretty cartoony. Also did the lining. Now I did notice that the bottom's getting a little bit saggy when you put things in. So I have um, some plastic um, as a liner and I also made these so I can um, glue the fabric around it and then it helps me easier to shove it into um, this thing, whatever you call it, the clutch, I guess. Um, and also will hopefully um, help keep things together because personally I don't really trust it but because I I know only these clutch closures when there's holes in them so you can actually sew the fabric to it but this one doesn't have that and apparently you glue your fabric inside of here and I'm just not sure how much weight it can carry before it like drops off or whatever so all right so i have a little update i have one side well it's not completely in it's really snug in there which is good let's see if we can take it out one-handed nope so this is what it looks like inside or i should say finished so uh originally i had two strips of this which I also have uh, a plate in at the bottom uh, but what that happened was when the bags open it basically you just you can reach into the bag because you know the you have just a, a plate of plastic so uh, what I did is I actually turned that into a frame as you can see here and I glued um, the fabric onto that and then I whip stitched the sewing onto that and then that makes it snug enough to fit into the clutch and then I can glue um, everything in there and that should be all very very secure so, and here is the finished bag with lining ready to go trick or treating Alright, so it's now the next day, and as you can see, we've already uh, got one gusset in. And we also decided to um, overlock the edges instead of doing the, the, the proper historical way of seam finishing. Uh, because it, be, it was a little bit too advanced for Melchior. Yes. So uh, we finished locking this. So Melchior is now going to also finish the ed these edges uh, locking, and then we can continue with the other gusset. Um, and then we're almost done. Just have to iron and then finish the hem and the sleeve hem, and then you got yourself a robe. Oh yeah. <laughs> stitch from that point to that point mm -hmm. and then we're going to do the same on this side and then you 
have yourself a cusset. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yes. Cool. Better cool. Cool. Better be. Okay. <laughs> okay. So start sewing. Yes, ma'am. Well, it's not finished yet. We still have to iron the seams and do the hemming, but we tried it on. It looks like a thing. It looks like a thing. Yes. So he's got this trick or treat bag that I made. Yes. Are you happy with it? I'm very happy with it. You have a fake wand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing, wearing the glasses. Yeah, this uh, more like reading glasses or something. I don't know. They're antique ones, but yeah. I'm going to further whiten up your beard. Trick or treat. treat. <laughs> All right, let's do some ironing and then uh, hemming, uh -huh. and then your robe is done. What's the weirdest thing you've ever done? Putting snot on a piece of fabric with a roller. <laughs> so we're making our own buckram. So this is linen and cornstarch. And it's kind of like snot. Yeah, but that's good or because that means you got the good consistency. So we're working on the shoes right now. He's wearing, uh, what is it? Pez? 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 Which is apparently the original Tom Esperilla shoes. So we wrapped him in cling fling and then we started molding with masking tape and uh, pattern paper to fill up the spots. So now I'm going to uh, wrap these parts in cling fling again and then fill them all out with masking tape so I can have a pattern. But looking good. Nice and pointy. And then I can uh, start making his shoes too. I mean, they go over the, the shoe. So, shoe but, yeah, cover. Shoe cover, but stitched on. First mock up is done, and I think it's going to be the only mock up because actually it's pretty good, right? Yes. It's a bit weird now because the sole and showing but so this needs to be turned up that's just the seam allowance I'm gonna fill out his little pointy toe it's a little bit up I don't know how good you see this because it's black on black but yeah it's nice standing off of the foot All right so I'm cutting out the linen, the stiff linen, which is really nice. It's very paper-esque. I already cut out one shoe, I'm cutting out the second one, um, and then obviously using the blue linen, um, and then piece this shoe cover together. Right, I've got the shoe cover all sewn up. This is what it looks like. On the inside, I put a little bit of stuffing in the toe, and next we're going to put it on the shoe. But I am gonna need two hands for that, so. And there we go, it's on the shoe. Um, it does need a little bit more stretching, uh, but I'll do that once I when I've sewn this all down, and then um, I can steam and mold it a little bit better too form better to the shoe but yeah looks good <laughs> Final stretch. Oh yeah. Just hemming the sleeves and then one final press and your and then I'm done. Your robe is done. So how did you find the experience? Hard? Yeah. It's uh, pretty complicated. It's not that complicated <laughs> well, though. 
you've got a, a bit more experience. True. I've never done anything really like this, so... Yeah, I can understand that it can be complicated. Next time I'll let you make a corset. He'll be, uh, a boy. Small boy, uh, 11, 12 years old, uh, and a uh, scrawny little fella. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 that can't be the one. Surely not. Why, that big lad must be close on to 20. Still stuck. <laughs>